Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, good morning. You know, this first song, we wanted to open this song as we think about God's presence today and about spending time with Him. Uh, this uh, phrase stuck out to me this week when I was looking at this music. It says, Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sor sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And I read a little bit about this hymn. You may or may not have known much more much about it. But the hymn writer, his name was Joseph Scriven. And he wrote these words for his mother who was sick. And she opened them asking, who wrote these? And he said, the Lord and I wrote it together. And it was a song that he wrote to encourage her in this time. And so I pray that whatever you've gone through this week, that you would sing this song anew with fresh lenses and new eyes as we contemplate on how a faithful a friend is that Jesus is for us. So please stand as we sing our opening hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Good morning, church. Sorry, I got caught up. Please stay where you are. I want you to turn to somebody next to you. I want you to greet them. I want you to give them a hug and tell them happy Sabbath. Good morning, happy Sabbath church. Today we get a taste of the beautiful Chicago weather. But you know, one thing about good crisp weather, it, it, it makes you feel alive. And so I'm glad that you're here worshiping with us. And if you're online today, we're glad that you're joining us as well. So if you're a guest today, please stay for our potluck. After church in our fellowship hall, there's a, a wonderful meal prepared for you, just for you. So join us 
after the service. And then we want to invite you to stay with us today. We have a special, special guest that's going to be doing a parenting conference for us. We've been talking about this for quite a while, parenting with love and logic. And Sheila Hines is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She is going to be leading us through the seminar. It's for people of all ages. If you're a parent, you we want you to attend. Whether you have young kids or older kids, this is going to be a fantastic program for you. So join us today, 2 p.m., right here in the church. You know, this is based on a, on a larger than just this one seminar, and there's a book behind it. And we're going to be raffling off this book to somebody this afternoon. So hopefully you get a free book. Obviously, if you want to purchase one on your own, you can. But hopefully we can give this to a nice young family today. So 2 o'clock, join us. Then we want you to continue worshiping with us during the week. So we want to make sure that you join us for our weekly prayer meeting. Wednesday evening, 7.30 p.m., we get together and pray. We call this our prayer pursuit initiative, and it's simply us praying together. Our pastors lead us through scripture, and then we pray. And I'll also say this to you, ladies, we have a special prayer program for women. And this has been going on for quite a while. I know Anna leads out in it. Many of our ladies attend. I believe it's on Sundays at 830. It's a beautiful time for women to connect with women in prayer. So I want you to, we'll put the information on the website. If you need to know today, Anna, Gracie, a lot of ladies attend. We want you to connect on Sunday nights at 8.30 on Zoom as well. And then lastly, we want you to be prepared next Sabbath to have a fantastic Thanksgiving celebration with us. Is God good? As Christians, we always say that, well, it's time to show it, and we show God's goodness. We're starting a series right now called Gospel Generosity, and we're going to learn how good God is. And when God's goodness is in you, you can't help but be generous in your time and in your treasure and in your talent. So today starts that. Next Sabbath is Thanksgiving Sabbath. We're starting on Friday night, November 18th, 6.30 p.m., we have our youth Friendsgiving, Friendsgiving dinner. So if you are a young person, middle school or high school age, we have a special program starting our weekend celebration year. Friendsgiving, all our young people, special program, special meal just for you. Then Sabbath, we're going to come to church, and we're going to have a celebration day, Sabbath morning, our young kids are going to be preparing and packing the food baskets during Sabbath school. If you're older and you want to participate in ministry, you come by to the social hall as well. Okay? Sabbath morning, special Sabbath school for the kids. They're going to be preparing these baskets that we're going to take out Sabbath afternoon. So adults, your role is after potluck, we're going to deliver these food baskets to the community. So, it's a family affair, showing God's goodness. Sabbath morning, man of ministry. Sabbath afternoon, man of ministry. Okay? So, many of you were given a card asking you to bring some food items. If you didn't bring it today, you can bring it up to Tuesday evening so that we can get them prepared for the kids to pack Sabbath morning. Okay? So, you have till Tuesday evening to bring your goods to the church. Then what else is happening next Sabbath beside a special service? Remember our pie ministry. And what's the pie ministry? It's a ministry for you to connect with your neighbors. And the best way to connect with people is through food. And the best way to do it is free food and dessert type food. So we want each person to take at least two pies, each family. The pies are free, so there's no excuse. All you have to do is sign up. You can sign up online. You can sign up with the QR code. You can sign up on paper today. Today's the last day. 
because we have to get all these pies ordered because next Sabbath, this church is going to be full of pies. And you're going to get to take your pies. And the goal is you're going to take your pie to a neighbor. And not the neighbor you know well. Not the neighbor you high five every day. The neighbor that you never talk to. The neighbor that you don't connect with well. You're going to drop them off a pie and see what God does with one pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving Day. And you're going to tell us about it because I know we're going to get some good stories. And part of that pie is going to be a blessing, a blessing for them on Thanksgiving. So next Sabbath, a lot going to go on at church. Church is going to be full. Church is going to be crazy. But it's all about ministry. And if you love God, then you're going to love ministry. Because you can't love God and not love ministry, right? Because loving God means loving people. And ministry is about serving and about people. So we want to challenge you to join us next Sabbath for a Thanksgiving celebration weekend, we're calling it. And then on Thanksgiving Day, what day is that? The 24th, I think. We're going to be back in church. The tradition continues. We always come together on Thanksgiving at Philam, and we're doing it again. Pandemic is over. So come here, and we're going to have a little program on Thanksgiving Day. And then two days later, it's the 26th. We'll be back in church, and we're going to be blessed for another Thanksgiving program. That one will be special because we're going to talk about talents. And I can guarantee you, I think we have the most talented pastoral team in America. We do. We have all three of our guys. They sing. They play. I will put them up against any pastoral team in America. So, God, they are going to share some of their talents with us on that day as part of the message, okay? So, we got a fun-filled few weeks, and I know God's going to bless, okay? So, bring your friends, bring your family, come celebrate with us. Now, with all of that done, I get a chance to do something that we love to do at church. We love to invite new people to join us, and we're so excited because today we're going to invite three new families joining our church. So I know it's hard for some, some of them to do, <laughs> but I'm going to invite them up front for, for us. So uh, Sanjay and Sarah, Swamidas, they are our new young couple. They are joining our church. Today is a second reading for them. We want to bring them up. Rachel, we're going to bring her up with us today. Glenn, you're welcome to come with her. Glenn doesn't want to. And then um, Joe and Jamie McGovern, this is their second reading as well. We've, we've been connecting and we just can't get them here. And Jamie told me yesterday, she said, just do it, please. <laughs> so we're going to do it. I think they're watching online. So Jay, uh, Joe and, and, um, and Jamie, welcome. I'm going to ask Nestor to come up. We want to say a little prayer for you guys and invite you as part of our family. And so thank you, Lord, for all of these three families, and I pray a special blessing upon them, that your Holy Spirit will bless them, and that you would use them as uh, witnesses for, of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks, guys. It's your turn. I'm going to invite all our children up for children's story. And Uncle Dan is going to tell the story today. I like that. Uncle Dan takes us back a few years, right? So come on down, kids.
Come on, kids. There's, oh, there's quite a few kids there, too. Come on. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, you have a beautiful voice. Okay, today we're going to talk about stewardship. Stewardship is being special to other people, okay? Hello, I'm here. Hi. Okay, today we're going to talk about a doctor. There was this kid, his name was Donald, okay? And he wanted to be a doctor. So he studied, huh? Yes, Donald, yeah. So he studied very hard and he was accepted at a university and he became a doctor, okay? So there was another thing that he also liked. He also liked planes and he became a pilot. So what he did was he took special medicine and a lot of band-aids and a lot of medical things to kids that were sick. And he worked a long time and after he retired, which that means that you don't have to wake up early to go to work, this you have a lot of time to do all the good things. So his wife and Wilma said, okay, we would like to go where God wants us to go. Okay? So what happened? They were sent to Cambodia. It's a long, long, far away place. Okay? And they were into an orphanage. You guys know what an orphanage is? An orphanage is a place where they have kids. They don't have mommy and they don't have daddy. But there's special people that take care of them. And they were sent there and they were so happy because the orphanage, sometimes they don't have money. So people come in and help for free. So one day, listen to what happened. One day, a girl and a boy, they were brothers and sisters. The girl was hurt, she was limping. So the guards came running, doctor, doctor, please help us. There's a girl that she needs help. And the doctor said, what happened? What happened? She's not walking right. And he said, okay, let's go. Let's see her. And she had a broken leg. But the place didn't have anything to help her. So what do I do? What do I do? He went outside and from an old car, he got two pieces of metal and he wrapped the leg of the girl. But the brother was very scared of everyone. So he hid under the girl's bed. But the doctor wanted to be his friend. How can I do this? He remember, oh, I got something that he liked. He had a little red toy car. And the kid went on the front under the bed and grabbed it and hid back because he was afraid of everything. Well, a couple of weeks by passed and they had to go back to the United States. But the son of the doctor said that, since I know that you like planes, I have a gift for you. You're going to go to France to this special place where you're going to see planes for every shape and every size and every color. And he said, oh, thank you. That's so sweet from you, my son. Thank you. Thank you. And they were getting ready to go to France. But what happened? The doctor got very sick. And he died. And they were not going to be able to make the trip to France. But the son said, Mom, I know you guys helped all the kids and you were good stewards. I know that you guys honor God by helping them. So let's honor Daddy by going to France. Yes. So the mom said, you know, you're right. Let's go. 
and up they went to France. So when they came out of the airport, something happened, very special. So when they came out of the airport, they needed a taxi cab to go to the place where they were gonna see the planes. So they started looking at the cars and they saw some people that look from Cambodia. <gasps> wow, okay, so they went and hop into a car and they said, hello sir, good morning, good morning. And the lady said, where are you from? Oh, I am from Cambodia. <gasps> no way, my, my husband and I were there. By any chance you live in the refugee place? And he said, yes, my sister and I lived there for a little while. <gasps> oh, wait a minute, maybe you remember my husband. He was a doctor. So she pulled a small picture from, the, uh, from her purse and showed it to the driver. And the driver went a trrrr. He parked and he looked at the picture. And quietly, he had a bag like this one and he pulled something from the inside. It was the same little red toy that the doctor gave him as a kid. <gasps> Wow, that is very special. He was a good steward, and we can be good stewards because we help little kids, and we can help people too. We can help people with a smile. Can you smile? Can you guys all smile? Look at those beautiful pearly uh, teeth. Very smile, smile. God wants us with a smile to help people, okay? You can make a day really special when you smile to someone, okay? My father said, then when you smile to someone, you make them feel very special. When somebody smiles at you, do you feel special? Yes, of course, right? So let's smile, okay? And we honor God to that, okay? Can we close our eyes so we can pray? Everybody, close your little eyes. Everybody, everyone. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for the most magnificent, most beautiful, and most sweet steward of all, Jesus Christ. Thank you because he gave his life for us so we can be like him and we can smile for someone that is in need. So one day we can tell all these stories that Jesus helped us to uh, get while we were here. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, in honor of the doctor, we all gonna get a little Band-Aid so when you see someone that's in need, you could give it to them, okay? All right, don't leave, you get a Band-Aid, okay? And I think it's from Sesame Street. Okay, God bless.
giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart, desire says that there's nothing worth more than God's presence. And as we think and consider today in gospel generosity, how, what we ought to do with our time, I pray that we would use our time to spend our time in God's presence. Um, please sing the song with us. Holy Spirit, you're welcome.
上，顺利。The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the rush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Sure. It's all possible, so we kneel for prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful once again that you have bring us together in this house of worship. Father, we are just humbled that you are a loving and awesome God. Who forgive us of our sins? We have so many shames. We have so many guilt feelings and sinfulness in our lives. But you're always loving to welcome us, graciously embracing us, Father, because you are willing to forgive us. We are here in this house of worship, Father, for one reason: is to worship you for who you are, full of love, full of.、Uh, Uh, forgiving heart, for all of us, I lift up our spirit and our souls, Father, because we are in need of Your grace. Today, we specially pray for our pastor, who will deliver the message. Encourage us to walk by faith and not by sight. Father, I pray also for those who are struggling in life, those who, who are in need. Of your blessings, <clears throat> of your forgiving spirit and your heart, Father, that all of us will have a chance. Of those who ask for forgiveness, will be given life and hope. And those who seek you, Father, bless them. Give them a special blessing. We ask, Father, that each of us today will、uh, be blessed in our time of worship in this place. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Good morning, friends. Thank you, EJ. Clark, thank you guys. <clears throat> so this week, I lost my voice on Monday and Tuesday, and I was preparing my message, praying, God, please give me some voice so that I can share what you have in my heart. And thankfully, I'm able to speak. So don't mind the raspiness; my voice is still recovering. It's much better than yesterday. So you know, humidifier works, drinking tea and water works, and your prayers work. So thank you. So please bear with me. Uh, as I <clears throat> bear with my voice, as we as we learn about gospel generosity today, we're starting a new series. It's entitled "Gospel Generosity," and what we're trying to do is we're trying to look at the three gifts that God has given human beings. He's given us all the gift of time. He's given us treasure, 
and then he's given us talent. So time, treasure, and talent. And what we're going to do today is we're going to discover uh, what, what do we do with the gift of time that God has given us. So uh, we're going we're gonna to have a little bit of a conversation here. Turn to your neighbor and share with your neighbor what's, what are some things that you uh, enjoy doing with your time this week. All right, I'll give you uh, 23 seconds. Go. All right, 15 seconds left, 15. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, did you enjoy hearing what your neighbor had to share? Now, if you would be authentic and honest, now share something that you wish you didn't spend your time on last this past week. Okay, with your neighbor, right? I'll give you 19 seconds, okay? Go. Something that you wish you didn't spend your time doing or you wasted your time doing too much. All right, five more seconds. Those of you watching online, Talk with your neighbor or think about it yourself. All right, <clears throat> so let's be, let's be honest, right? What is one way that you regret spending your time this past week? What did your neighbor say if you're too ashamed to talk about your own? Too much, too much time on Netflix? Anyone? Yeah, some, some people are, are too much time driving, yeah. Too much time making a decision. What'd you say? Yeah, too much time watching the elections, especially this past week, all right? So check this out. Everyone has, when it comes to time, treasure, and talent, uh, everyone has different talents, right? Everyone has uh, different treasures. Everyone has different uh, treasures in their bank account. No one is the same. But all of us have time. The equal, it's, all of us have an equal amount of time, okay? Time is the only equitable gift. It's the only gift we have. What is time anyway? Do do you have a definition of time? What, What is time? Are we experiencing time right now? So let me give you the, the, a dictionary, uh, philosophical definition. The indefinite continued progress of existence in events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> so what does that mean? So time is basically uh, a way that we experience existence that has a past, a present, which we have right now, and a future. Okay? All right, that sounds, that sounds that's too philosophical. Let's bring it down, let's bring it down to earth. Uh, time is... Uh, we have a, a specific duration. I, I was looking up some statistics, wondering how, how, uh, what's the average lifespan of human beings in the world? <clears throat> in the U.S., it's, a, almost, it's closer to 80, but in the world, do you know how long the average lifespan is of a human being? <clears throat> what do you think? It's 73 years, okay? 73 years. Those of you who, are, uh, who have have beat 73, God bless you. Um, you, God has, you have taken care of yourself and awesome. But the average lifespan is 73 years. I'm, I'm past the halfway mark already, <clears throat> all right? So time, what we do know is time is limited. And Solomon said this in Ecclesiastes 7, verse two. He said, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. You see what he's saying? It's actually better to go to a funeral than to a wedding. Why is that? Solomon, why are you saying it's better to go to the house of mourning to a funeral than to the house of feasting, like at a wedding? Because when you go to a funeral, we all lay it to heart that life doesn't last forever, that it's going to end. And we all know that time 
the time is, 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 is short. The older that I get, the older I get, I realize, wow, I'm, I, I can't believe, I'm, I'm, my kids are going to become teenagers in a few years. Well, in a few years, give me five, six, seven years. They're going to be teen. They're going to grow up, and wow, it's, it passes by so fast. And so the question is, when we, when we know that time is so short, how are we supposed to spend our time, okay? How are we supposed to spend our time? Look, uh, <clears throat> Christianity, the Bible, it doesn't prescribe or give a prescription of exactly what you should do once you wake up until you sleep at nighttime. <clears throat> it's not gonna give you a formula, okay? Um, let me pull my planner out here. So. I don't know if there's anyone who, who, who loves, like, I'm a product, productivity junkie, right? I've bought so many different planners, used so many different calendars, studied so many different systems. You can go to Barnes and & Noble and, and find so many different systems, right? I have a system now where I, I journal on the left side every day in my devotional time, and I write down what's most important. Everyone has their own system on how to manage how to manage their time. The Bible is not going to give you, hey, this is, what, this is exactly what you need to do. Okay, it's not going to tell you, uh, you need, this is what you're going to do at 6, 6 a.m. and at 8 a.m. and at 2 p.m. It's just not going to tell you that. The Bible doesn't give you a prescription. However, on the, it gives you a philosophy of how we should use our time. It doesn't give you a prescription, a formula. It gives you a philosophy. A what? <clears throat> a philosophy. Okay? And what we're going to do this morning is unpack a scriptural teaching of a biblical philosophy on how we can manage and use our time. You guys still with me? All right. So we're going to go to Luke chapter 10, okay, and we're just going to read. We're going to be in verses 38 through 42, just five verses. <clears throat> and what we're going to do today is we're going to figure out, we're going to learn two philosophies of time, of time use, two philosophies of time use, okay? Okay. So here's the first one. Let's start with uh, <clears throat> verse 38. So if you have a physical Bible, that's great. If you have a digital Bible, that's okay. Let's go. Luke chapter 10, now in 38. Now as they went on their way. This is Jesus and his disciples, okay? Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. <clears throat> All right, keep going. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Look at verse 40. But Martha was, what, ver, what word does your Bible say? My version says distracted. Martha was distracted with what? With Netflix? Martha was distracted with much serving. Okay? And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. All right? Martha is distracted by doing. All right? So I'm going to write it on here. Uh, I'm going to write it big because I know those in the back, you need like a magnifying glass, but we're going to write it here. So she was distracted by, what word is this? <clears throat> All right, she was distracted by the philosophy of do, 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 serve, 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 serve. Come on, Jesus. I, look, I, I'm preparing the food. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all the dishes. Uh, I'm making sure that things are, are spick and span and things are clean. Uh, Jesus, come on. Tell Mary to wake up. I need help because I have to do, 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 do. I have to serve, 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 serve. She's distracted by doing. And just in case you think that you, that we are immune to distraction, the distraction of doing, let's think again. Uh, the other day, uh, Catherine, was in Catherine was in Colorado for a few days, and I was with my, my, my girls. We had a grand time. <clears throat> one day, one of my daughters, Eliana, she was a little sad, and she shared this, she shared this uh, line with me while we were talking, <clears throat> uh, and I said, why are you sad? And she said, Daddy, I missed you while I was at school. I said, miss you? Oh, that's why she's sad. 
she's sad because I'm trying to prepare a meal. I'm trying to do all this stuff. I'm working, working, working for her, but I'm not being with her. I'm distracted by trying to prepare everything, but I'm not actually with her. I was distracted by doing. And could it be that we too are distracted by doing? By working, 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 serving, 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 doing, 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 working hard. I think working hard and doing an excellent job in our work is important. But could it be that some of us have crossed that threshold of I need to do a good job to this has become my life? That my life consists of serving, 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 and working, working, working hard? Could it be that life, life has, has been all about growing your business or your organization or the, the very focus and, and predominant theme of your life is just to raise your children and, and just to provide for the family or to study for the next test or to, for the next extracurricular activity? Now, come on, I don't want to see a raise of hands, but how many of us are carrying uh, work problems or things that need to be taken care of or maybe tests or school items right now while we're here? Like, we're burdened about all of this work that we have to do that we're going to have to do next week. And could it be that we're distracted by doing, doing, doing? Could it be that, that, that we are so distracted by results that our relationships around us are crumbling? Could it be that we have, we have, we have, we have uh, prioritized productivity over presence? That's Martha's problem. Martha's problem is she is prizing productivity over presence because she's in the presence of Jesus, but she can't, who, she's thinking, how can I serve? Serve, 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 serve. And she's anxious, and look what Jesus says in verse 41. The text says, but the Lord answered, Martha, Martha. Look, when, when your parent says your name twice, you know, you gotta, you gotta pay attention. Right? In Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus talked to Peter and said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. He actually came to me and asked for permission to bother you. So when Jesus says your name twice, you got to pay attention here. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. You are anxious. You guys ever felt anxious recently? In 2005, <clears throat> I was speaking with some students in Zimbabwe and Africa. I was in Pastor, Glenn, Doc, Pastor Russell's hotel room and, and, and other students were there trying to prepare our sermons for that day. And as I was preparing the sermon, I was an anxious soul. Oh, guys, am I, am I gonna finish this on time? We, we, we only have 30 minutes left? I think I need like 45 minutes or an hour. Oh man, I just can't get this slide. This story doesn't work. What story should I use? I was so anxious. And I remember Pastor Russell sitting in that hotel room saying, Nestor, I, I appreciate, what, I appreciate you know, your work, but could you please calm down because it's making me anxious. <laughs> distracted by doing, distracted by doing. I was anxious about my performance. I was anxious about, about, what, about making sure that I prepared a good sermon. And for Martha... You know, she was anxious about her role as a woman. In Jewish culture, a woman's skill in hospitality was a badge of honor. And in the Filipino culture, it's true too. One of the most hospitable cultures that, that, that I've seen, maybe I'm biased because I, I, I grew up in a, an, in a Filipino home, but it's true. Hospitality in Jewish culture said that a woman's skill in hospitality was a badge of honor. Aha, uh -huh. so that's why Martha was anxious. You know why she was anxious? <clears throat> Martha was anxious because she was obsessed about her hospitality. Martha's hospitality was tied to her self-image. Her performance, her hospitality, her serving was tied to her self-image. 
That's why she's anxious. I want to wear the badge of honor because I want to be Mrs. Hospitality in the town. And so I need to make sure that I serve well and that I do, 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 do well with my time. Because then, then I will wear that badge of honor. Then I will be actually become a person of worth. Her self-worth is rooted in her performance. And she becomes anxious. And friends, we're anxious too. You know why? Because we root our self-image and self-worth in our doing. I've read this before. Catherine reminded me, hey, you read that quote sometime. But let me, let me, read, it. Let me read this again because some of you might not have heard this. <clears throat> This is a statement, I think it was in Vanity Fair, I have the source if you want it, by Madonna. You guys know who Madonna is? Okay, queen of pop. <clears throat> I usually don't quote Madonna when I, when I speak, but let me just share with you what she said. Madonna, Madonna said, I have an iron will and all of my will has always been to conquer some horrible feeling of inadequacy. I push past one spell of it and discover myself as a special human being, and then I get to another stage, and I think I'm mediocre and, un 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 and uninteresting, again and again. She said, my drive in life is from this horrible fear of being mediocre, right? I wanna become something, <clears throat> but I'm not doing well, well enough. Again, and then she says, and that's always pushing me, pushing me. Now listen to these last two lines. She says, because even though I've become somebody, I still have to prove that I'm somebody. And then she says, my struggle has never ended and it probably never will. I wanna become a somebody and I'm aiming for a somebody, but the image of that somebody, I'm not that somebody and because I keep failing over and over again, I have to recreate myself and be more risque now and I have to become a somebody and when I think I grabbed it, when I think I've grasped that somebody and I've become that somebody, I'm not that somebody. And Martha's like, I want to become that somebody by doing, 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 by wearing that badge of honor and be by being the most hospitable person in town. And as much as she's grasping for it, she's actually grasping for the wind. And for Madonna, she's saying, I'm never going to be somebody. I'm trying, but I'm never going to be that, that somebody. And it's true. We will never become that somebody as long as our identity and self-worth is tied to what we do. You're never gonna reach that. You're never gonna reach that ideal. Let's, 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 let's apply this a little bit. <clears throat> what about uh, parents? I, I often think, what do I communicate? What do we communicate as parents to our children? Ah, oh, man, my kids, my kids aren't doing well, they're not behaving well enough. And if they were just behaved this way, then, then they would become a somebody. So, Let's do some behavior modification so that they can do well because obviously they're not behaving enough and they're not listening enough and they're having too many tantrums. And, and so we, we push this philosophy upon our children. And by the way, we're gonna learn more, learn more about that from Sheila Hines today at 2 p.m. Or what about spouses? Ah, oh, come on. I don't, I don't meet my spouse's standards. Like, he or she has this expectation, but I'm here. I don't, I don't meet those standards. Or my spouse, my spouse doesn't, doesn't meet my standards. She needs to come up to here, or he needs to come up to here. Or work, you know what? I just re I, I really need that promotion at work. Now, there's nothing wrong with working hard and being promoted and, and, and rising in your influence in, in, your, in your company or your organization. There's nothing wrong with that. But the question is, the question is, there's the, the, the question is what, what's the motivation behind it? Is it so that you can increase your influence and love others through your influence and through your skill? Or is it driven by a desire because you feel like you're not a somebody and finally when you cry, climb up a few, few rungs on the ladder, you're finally gonna become a somebody? Or what about church? Come on, I, you know, we've heard, I've heard this, right? Hey, 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 son, daughter, you haven't been to church in so long. You need to go to church more often. 
because that's going to save you, right? You just need to go and follow the rituals because then you're going to become a somebody. Martha thinks that she, beca- she can become a sub- somebody if she serves well. Come on, Jesus. I am serving. I'm wearing my badge of honor, and Martha is not serving with me. So go tell that lazy Martha, of, of this sister of mine, to serve with me because that's what's most important. But you see, Jesus, when it comes to spending our time, Jesus has a different philosophy of how we spend our time. It's not this first option, doing. There's a second option. There's a second option. Second philosophy of how we should spend our time. Check out verse 42. The text says, let's start with 41 again. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. And then notice this in verse 42. You gotta see this. <clears throat> but one thing is, mine says necessary. What version does yours say, Jason? Needed. I like the English standard version better. One thing is necessary. Like, one thing is necessary. I need water right now. That's necessary, right? This is needed right now for my throat. One thing is necessary. And then he says, Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. I love how Eugene Eugene Peterson translated this in his paraphrase, the, the message. He said this, only one thing is essential. What word did I say? One thing is essential and Mary has chosen it. One thing is essential? Now, when I tell my children that veggies, that vegetables are essential, all right? It's essential. Like when my great-grandmother told me, you better eat this slimy okra. It's essential, right? My great-grandmother said, this is necessary, right? When we say that something is essential, you need to do this. It's necessary. But when Jesus says that something is essential, it's really essential. It's really necessary. And the question is, what was that thing that Mary chose? Verse 39. I love this. And she, speaking about Martha, had a sister called Mary, and she did two verbs, two actions. She what? She sat where? Whew. I just imagine it. Maybe she... Do you think she, she, has, she was uh, sitting Indian style, cross, cross leg? I can imagine. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet. And what else did she do? Was she telling about her story? She was listening. Martha, 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 you're distracted by serving and you are anxious and troubled. But you know what? Mary has chosen the essential thing. And what's the essential thing? Doing, doing, doing? Serving, serving, serving? Nope. This is how she spent her time. Can you guys read that? Trying to write it big. Sorry about my handwriting. Mary chose the necessary thing with her time, which was to delight. And it's not just sitting, friends. It's not just sitting and passively taking it in. It's it's actually delighting in him. Now, Mary's position, this is shocking. What? Mary on the floor? In their culture, a disciple of a rabbi would sit at the rabbi's feet. Mary's position is shocking because rabbis did not have women disciples. Girls did not even have formal education. They were trained in household duties like sewing and weaving and cooking and cleaning and doing and serving and hospitality. So this was radical for Mary to actually be sitting at Jesus' feet as a disciple. And Mary is sitting 
and listening and absorbing and delighting in Jesus. Martha, your philosophy of how you, you should, your, your, how you should use your time is serving, 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 and doing, doing, doing. But Mary has chosen the essential part, more essential than the slimy okra that you eat, or ampalaya, or whatever, peas. What, are, what, what, what vegetables do you like to eat? What is that? Guacamole, is that a vegetable? Avocado, avocado. All right? Even better than guacamole and avocado, right? Well, even better than doing is actually feasting on Christ and, taste, and tasting him. And that's what Mary did. And so question for you, you don't have to share with your neighbor. If you do a tom, time audit, okay? If you do a time audit and review the last seven days of how you used your time, where would you rate yourself in these categories, okay? How much of your time was consumed in doing, 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 doing? Or how much of our time has really been here? Oh, come on, pastor. It's necessary that I make a living. It's necessary that I grow my business. It's necessary, it's necessary, it's necessary. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, it is necessary, but according to Jesus, what's necessary? Delighting and sitting and listening and receiving and praying and reading the word and absorbing and not just reading a devotional book or great commentary about scripture but actually going to scripture and, and taking Jesus in and asking and delighting in him and finding my greatest joy and satisfaction and pleasure in receiving and absorbing Jesus. And according to Jesus, that's necessary. That's essential. You see, Mary is not a somebody because of her hospitality. She's actually a nobody who became a somebody because she was in the presence of the true somebody. That's where she found her identity. Mary's identity was not wrapped up in her doing. It wasn't something that she achieved. Her identity and self-worth and her pleasure and happiness was something that she received. It wasn't what she achieved. It was receiving Christ, receiving the joy of Jesus. Her self-worth and her joy was not found in her service and her in, in trying to gain, her, gain something. Her self-worth and her joy and her happiness was given to her by Christ. Not achieved, but received. Not given, not gained, but given to her as a gift from Christ. That's where her true happiness was from. That's how she knew that she was a somebody. And before we serve, friends, I wonder, before we serve, and we're doing amazing things. Last week, we celebrated all of our medical workers. This week, we're blessing our, our neighbors and blessing those who are less privileged. And I wonder, I wonder to, to myself, and I wonder for this community of faith, could it be that God, is, that God is saying, hey, hey, make sure that before you serve and when you serve, that you're learning to sit first. That before you do something for Christ, oh yeah, here Jesus, I think you need a pumpkin and you need some corn. Like before we bring something, that we learn how to actually sit there and savor him. And to say silent. and to listen. To allow his words, these eternal words, to come into my life so that it soaks me, so that I'm not just doing church for the sake of church, but I'm soaked by scripture and I can't wait to go to church. I can't wait to serve. I can't wait to tell people about Jesus because I've been soaking and bathing in the delightful sun rays of Jesus. 
And there's so much more. There's so much more. Martha, Martha, Martha. There's so much more. Martha, Mary has chosen the better part, the essential part, the necessary part. And friend, if you and I do a time audit, how much of us have been here? I'm not just talking about doing and serving. How much has have been here? Like when my daughter came to me and said, hey, you're doing this, Dad. You're, you're doing all this stuff. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you, Dad. That's what she was communicating. And so look, three applications, then we're done. Three ways to apply this philosophy to our lives. One, delight before doing. Okay, I'm going to put it right here. Delight um, Sorry, my handwriting, I know. You guys read that? So before I do and get up for work, I'm delighting in him. And you know what's so amazing about this? After Jesus talks about the uh, 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 one thing is necessary, Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her, the very next thing that he does, the, the, the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Are you serious? So Jesus is sharing something that he models. And he's, he's sharing, look, we're going to do great ministry. But Mary has chosen the best thing, and I'm going to model it in the next verse. And Jesus was actually praying to his father and talking to him. So what does that look like? That we delight in Christ before we do. That we, we quit Netflix earlier, go to sleep earlier, so we can wake up earlier, and before checking Facebook, we actually see the face of Jesus. And we delight in him. And so that we're taking that delight before we do. And, you know, different people have different methods, right? I'm not trying to glorify my method. I bought this weekly calendar, right? This weekly calendar, planning your week out. I'm such a productivity nerd, I know. But um, I have the list of all of my intentions. Do I get all of it done? No. Most of it I do. But here's my top three. And you know what my most important intention is for the week? To commune with God and journal. And to speak to Jesus. And even though I, I don't complete all my tasks, I know that I've done the most necessary thing, the most essential which is the delight, and to sit, and to pray. So, application one, you delight before doing. Pray before productivity. Worship before you go to work, okay? Secondly, check this out. So, you delight, the word here is while, okay? So, you delight while you do. Now, let me share this with you, and this is, a, this is a little deep, but I think it'll make sense. Genesis chapter one, we're not gonna read all the verses. Jesus begins creation, right? So verse three, God said, let there be light, and God said that the light was good. What word? Good. And then, you know, he, he creates other things, and then in verse nine, God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered into one place, let the dry land appear, and it was so God called the dry land earth, and the waters there were gathered together. He called the seas, right, sea and land, and God saw that it was good, right? Um, God said in verse 11, let the earth sprout vegetation, plant yielding seed, and he finished his work, and then at the end of verse 12, the text says, and God saw that it was good. Good. God creates, it's good. God creates something, it's good. And then after he creates uh, mankind at the very end of chapter 1, verse 31, the last verse, and God saw everything that he created and that he made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. A lot of us think that we cannot, we separate delight from doing, from worship, from work. But while God was creating, he was delighting in his creation. And so I wonder, you know the euphoria you feel when you create something? Those of you in the medical field, surgeons, you, 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 you uh, perform a successful surgery. There's a sense of satisfaction. Ooh, this was good. Nurses, I, I don't know what example. Wow, what a successful injection. I don't, I don't know. 
Wow, great. I don't know why I thought of that. Teachers, this lesson plan, that was good. Oh, the conversation of that student who came to me who needed help, and finally, light, light bulb went on in his, in his eye, light bulb in his mind. I could see it in his eyes that, that, that there was a teaching moment. Ooh, that would be euphoria. That's good. Or you're a carpenter. You work with your hands. Ooh, that's good. That euphoria and the feeling you have of satisfaction from creating, could it be that comes because you and I were made in the image of God, that we are co-creators with God? And that when we create something in the euphoria that I feel when I create a song and I sit here on Tuesdays or Thursdays whenever I'm at the church and I create a song, that euphoria that I feel like, ooh, this is good, is actually because I am made in God's image and that I can I can, that, that euphoria and the joy that I feel in doing something, I can delight in, and that I can actually bring worship and delight and bring that back and say, God, thank you for that successful injection. Or thank you, God, for the possibility of creating, uh, cr- creating this, this arrangement on music or create, creating this lesson plan. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring delight into our doing and we're trying to take the, the worship that we had and bring it not just before, oh, I just prayed before my surgery or I prayed this morning, but I'm actually trying to think that all of my serving and all of my doing is all encompassing and that I can delight in God in the things that I create and give him glory and praise for everything that I do. Thank God for the, this successful investment. Thank you, Lord, for this product that's selling like hotcakes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I don't know about you, but we separate these two spheres thinking that they're separate, but they're all together. And if we're creating, and if God is with us, that I can glorify God in the amazing conversations that I have with someone over, over uh, at Starbucks. I can bring God into every conversation, and every time I have joy, I can say yes. Praise God for that. That I can bring the delight of God into my doing. So we delight before we work, we delight while we are working, and last but not least, <clears throat> we delight in Christ's doing. Now check this out. Um, I look at my task list, I'm probably not going to finish everything I wrote down this, this past Monday. I'm not. And let's be honest, how many of us, um, how many of us have tasks from that, you know, from last week? that are going to carry over into next week. Anyone? Or is it just me? (laughs) Yeah. We're going to carry that into next week. Okay? And for some people, that causes a lot of anxiety. Okay? So what do we do? What do we do with attention? What if I don't finish all the work on my list? Let me give you just one more passage, and then we're through. What if I don't complete my work? John chapter 19, this is Jesus, his last words, uh, verse 28. Notice what he says. Notice what the Bible says. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Now catch verse 30. Don't, Don't miss this. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said the last three words, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So what do you do when you're anxious about not completing all the tasks that you were supposed to to finish? What do you do with the goals that you didn't accomplish this year? We're almost done with 2022. You had New Year's resolutions that you didn't fulfill this year. What do we do with that? What's really important, friends, is not that you completed your work, but what's really important in the grand scheme of things is that Jesus completed his work. Meaning that I rest in what Jesus has done. That's where I find my satisfaction. 
And if I'm like Mary, oh man, I'm just not serving enough. There's not enough food on the table. The house is not clean. I'm stressed out. Now, these things are important, right? You need to have a clean house and prepare meals. That's, that's important. But if our philosophy of life is here, then we're never gonna be, we're never gonna be happy. But when I, when I think about Jesus, and the fact that he finished his work, it is finished. That he accomplished salvation. That's my source of delight. And when I sit at his feet and worship, I'm not just reading a devotional book. I'm actually glorying in savoring the work that Jesus has done on my behalf of dying and saving me and working in my life. And so many of us are worried about our time. We're worried about our time. But check this out, guys. What's 72, what's 73 years compared to forever? Seriously. I mean, you know the story, the grand narrative of, of sti- the, meta, the meta story, right? Eric and I ta- always use that word. We were created, right? What's the second, second chapter of the Christian story? There was the fall. And then what's the third part? There was Redemption that Jesus completed his work. And then there's going to be a new creation. We were created to dwell with Christ forever, but because we chose our own way, Adam and Eve chose their own way, we've sinned and we've fallen short. But Jesus Christ came and he finished the work of purchasing our salvation, of redeeming us. He was so generous. And Jesus was so generous that he says, look, if you trust in me and believe in me, that I'm going to turn you and make you into a new creation so that you can live with me forever. So you don't have to worry about and stress about just the 73 years of life that you have on planet Earth. You're actually going to have me for the rest of your life. You're going to have me forever. And 20 years ago in Prosser High School, when I heard the gospel and I heard about Christ, this kid, this city kid, skinniest Filipino kid in the city of Chicago was busy doing, 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 and, and not doing, doing, not doing, and not doing, and not doing. I didn't know what the purpose of my life was, but when I found out that Christ completed salvation for me, I delighted in that. It did something in my heart. And now all the time that I wasted, now I see it in the, pers- in, the, in the perspective of Jesus' eyes, that Jesus even took the time that I wasted and redeemed all of that wasted time and uses that time for his glory. And friends, I would say this, that if our lives are just focused here, we're going to miss out on the amazing blessing of the light. And my challenge to you and to me, to all of us today, It's not, ah, yeah, buy the next planner or buy the next self-help book, strategy to manage your time. Those are good. But follow Christ's philosophy, prioritizing, delighting in him over doing, sitting and savoring over serving, worshiping over work. And the more we identify here, the more we realize that we are a somebody because Jesus is that somebody that we trust. So as our praise team comes up, I wonder if someone has been touched by this message. And in your heart of hearts, you're saying, you know what? I've been trusting in myself and my doing rather than trusting in what Jesus has done in his doing. My source of happiness has been myself, but now I wanna place the object of my happiness on the right object, which is Christ and what he's done for me. And if you're sensing that in your heart, friend, we wanna walk alongside you in your journey. There's a connect card in the view in front of you. We're even gonna put the QR code on the screen. Those of you watching online, if you're saying, look, I want to begin a relationship with Christ, mark that on the connect card or on the website, our online connect card. Mark baptism if you're thinking about baptism. Look, I wanna be part of a Bible study group. Mark that too. If you have a question or comment, write that too. Write your name, your best contact, and the pastoral team will come alongside you in your journey with Jesus. Friend, now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to taste, taste and see that Jesus is good. So fill that connect card, and as our deacons collect our tithe and offering as we, collect, as we, uh, 
sing this closing song, you can slip that connect card in the, the offering plate. So let's stand together. Let's give glory to God. Let's give glory to God for His goodness and what He's done for us. Father, these words inspire us today. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Father, I'm just putting myself in Mary's shoes, sandals. What would it have been like to soak in and delight in the goodness of Jesus? I'm wearing my own shoes. We're wearing our own shoes here in 2022. And the same Jesus that Mary feasted on is the same 
Jesus, that I, that we can feast on today. And so teach us, Lord, to sit and listen to delight before and while we do. Please, Lord, because this is necessary for our joy. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for coming. God bless you. Bring a friend next week. Church, before you leave today, there's something that we've neglected to do. So we're going to do it today. So I'm going to ask Catherine, come on up with the kids. Where's uh, Rodney and Jolene? We want to celebrate our pastors. They are such a blessing to us. Last month was Pastor Appreciation Month. And we were planning it for the last week. And then, like Noah, a flood came and ruined our celebration. So where's Catherine? Come on up with the kids. You know, I wasn't joking when I said we had the most talented pastoral team. And we love their families, and we love their wives, and we love their kids. And so we just want to recognize them today. We have a few things for you guys. Where's my assistants here? Our head deaconess. Come on, Elise. I want to give you this for you guys. And for you. And then I want Lisa to tell you guys what the kids made for you because I think it's so cute. I've never seen this before. So, yeah, Lisa. Well, when, we, when my kids were growing up, they always watched that show, The Donut Man. <laughs> and so what the kids did was they made these little, they decorated these little donuts because we do not know what we do without our wonderful, awesome pastors. Because life without Jesus is like a donut. There's a hole in the middle of your heart. Thank you so much for all you do. And we did get some donuts. <laughs> so we have a few. The kids also made some other cards out front. There's some other few gifts out there. But on behalf of the church, we have a special little gift for both of you. Um, I'll give it to you later. I guess I'll hold it. But I just want to recognize these guys. What a blessing you guys have been. So let's just pray for you, because you always pray for us. Father God, what a blessing it is to have pastors and families that are such, such good folks that bless us every week. And so we lift up Pastor Nestor and Catherine. We lift up Pastor Rodney and Jolene and their families, Lord. We just thank you for their ministry. We just pray that you will continue to bless them that you will continue to um, prosper their families, Lord. Because this is your church, and when our pastors are, are, are doing well, and when they are engaged, and when they are, are, are delighting in you, then I know our church will too. And so we thank you for them. We pray a special blessing for them. And we just pray today that as we leave this place, Lord, that we will just never forget that our delight comes from you. And if we do know that and we remember that, that everything else, everything else becomes less important. So thank you, God, for this Sabbath day. And thank you for our pastoral team. In your name we pray. Amen. Goodness. 